Let's give God the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. He's worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. I I love in Zechariah when it says, and I think it's the ninth chapter, when it refers to, oh, daughter of Zion. Hallelujah. We ought to rejoice. Why? Because our king comes. Our king is here. Jesus Christ the Lord. So we thank God for that. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So at this time, uh, is uh, Sister Judy on the line for scripture reading? Uh, Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, you want to give us a scripture? Hallelujah. Yes, I'm from um, James 1 and 2. Okay. 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 Defensive, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband mandated for the precious fruit of the earth, and have long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, stand in your heart, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Here ends the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Oh, and God has blessed us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I tell you, the Lord has a message for today. Hallelujah. So we don't want to leave now because there's a message from the Lord. So, Father, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. The title for today's message would become altar conscious. Become altar conscious. And we have a subtitle, which we are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. Hallelujah. In the book of First Corinthians, the third chapter, Verses 16 and 17. It reads, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's temple dwelleth in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, 
God will destroy that person. But God's oh, temple know. is sacred. And yeah. you together are that temple. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory oh, to God. So we're going to just discuss a story that's written in uh, First Chronicles, uh, the 21st um, chapter, about how David uh, built there an altar unto, unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord. And the Lord answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of a burnt offering. And then in the books of uh, 2 Samuel, the 25th chapter, uh, the Bible tells us again the story about how King David had taken a census. You see, the devil set out to entice David to sin by numbering his, his army, which is exactly what God told him not to do. Amen. So in 2 Samuel, David became conscious stricken after he did that. He realized that he had counted the fighting men. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what mm -hmm. I have done. Mm -hmm. Now, Lord, I beg you, take away the guilt of your servant. Jesus. I have done a very foolish thing. Mm -hmm. And as soldiers for the Lord, why do we worry? We worry about the number or count people. Too many servants are concerned about the church growth in numbers instead of growth in holiness and the love for God. So why are we counting numbers? How many come to God's service counting the number of people present? Jesus said, I tell you, there is a rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one, one yes, sinner right. who repents, my God. Mm. See, the Lord knows how many will hear his message. Mm. Those appointed to hear will hear unless Satan entices them otherwise. See, God knows what we have need of and, and he will supply every need so we're not to worry about how the service is gonna go or or how many is gonna listen because i'm gonna tell you something it's gonna go just the way the lord wants it to go hallelujah see now the lord has already told david to go and that he will deliver the enemy into his hand now, as Christians of God, we have been told already to go. What he expects from us. What he's going to do to give us favor and victory in life. So I'm here to encourage you not to give up on God. For God has not given up on you. If you give up on Jesus Christ... In no time, you will give up on the preacher. And finally, you're going to give up on yourselves. Because that is a trick of the enemy. Yeah. We must know that if God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. The yeah. Lord is my light and my mm -hmm. salvation. Whom yes. shall I fear, says the word of the Lord. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? So when you think about all that God has for us, and if we just put our trust in him and not be enticed by the enemy who will come along and tell us to do just the opposite of what God tells us. And this is what David found himself in. 
because he had sinned by numbering the people, not trusting God that he would win the battle. Even though God told him, I'm going to give them to you. I'm going to, I'm going to allow you to, to win this battle. So what happens? The Lord sent a plague upon Israel. As 70,000 men of Israel fell. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. As he was destroying, the Lord looked and he changed his heart. From continuing the disaster. And said to the angel who was destroying, it's enough, it's enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ormat, the Jezbusite, and God answered by fire. Hallelujah. See, we can thank God that the sacrificial system of the old is out. The need to go through any Leviticus priest to get to God is over. Hallelujah. And the need to stand before a particular altar to worship God is done. You can pray whenever and wherever you desire. What's interesting is that God didn't choose the threshing floor of an Israelite, but he chose one of a Jebusite. He may not come the way you think, or, or he may not... Um, uh, be there uh, according to your, your mind. <laughs> but one thing we do know, and that is God will answer, and he will answer with fire. For all have sinned and, and fall short to the glory of God, my Lord. But we got separated because of that. And all need to be reconnected. And there was only one way for that to be done. Hallelujah. Not many people can dispute the fact that they have sinned. Because we all have. Because if we say we have no sin, then we are telling God that he's a liar. And we know that our God does not lie. Hallelujah. We all have our own personal weakness and, and our personal guilt. But people are naturally, and this is what he revealed, naturally are self-serving. Even though people do good things, we all have our share of wrong. There's only one that can reconnect us to the Father to repent of our wrong. And his name is Jesus Christ. A name that was given above every name. A name that every knee will bow to and call him Lord. For he is truly Lord of Lord. He's over it all. The sacrificial system set up by our forefathers served his purpose. And it served it well. But we must keep in mind that the Spirit of God now dwells on the inside. The Spirit of each part of David's worship is still necessary today. See, our body is now the temple of God. And according to 1 Corinthians 6.19, which says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? We continue to lift up holy hands and dance before the Lord. We can sing songs of praise. We praise God in our obedience. We still thank him, hallelujah, by the fruit of our lips. But we must realize that the whole duty of man is to worship the Lord. We must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. And we can only do that by getting our heart right. Without a changed heart, 
things remain the same. And King David realized that he had to be punished for his sin. There were consequences for his actions. And there are consequences for our actions today. Whatsoever a man sow, he must reap. The Bible says David was given three choices for punishment. The first choice was seven years. A famine. Mm -hmm. This would surely be the death of some in Israel. But the wealthy and the resourceful will survive. Israel would have to depend on neighboring nations for food. The second choice was to flee three months before your enemies. This would be the death of some in Israel, but mostly soldiers. Israel would have to contend with the enemies among neighboring nations. And the third choice was three years. I mean, I'm sorry, three days of plague in your land. And this would be the death of some in Israel. But anyone could be struck by this plague. The rich, the poor, the influential or the anonymous, royalty or common. And David knew one thing, that it's better to take the punishment from the Lord than to take the punishment from man. People of God, we have a better chance of forgiveness by taking our sins to the Lord than to any fellow man. Because if you take it to man or woman, you may be fooled, tricked, or you may even completely be destroyed. One thing we know that the Lord, he has mercy. Hallelujah. The human heart is desperately wicked, we are told. They had no mercy. Mankind is for self. They will show you no compassion and is unable to love without the love of God in them. Hallelujah. You must believe me. Hallelujah. That Jesus, the Son of God, is more gracious. He is full of mercy. The Bible said he hears the cries of his people. Those that believe and have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord over their lives know that Jesus Christ has compassion. One thing about the Lord, he knows what we are going through. He knows our needs and he will answer. We need to just cry out to the Lord. Son of David, have mercy on me. We need to still say mercy. We need that mercy today. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Create in us, Lord, uh, clean hearts and renew the right spirit in us uh, and begin to worship the Lord. Worship the Lord, our Savior. Ask the Lord to prepare us uh, to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. God is holy, therefore we are holy. Because of who you are, we give him glory. Because of who who he, uh, he is, uh, we can give him praise. Uh, people of God, uh, we have a heart, but our heart must be fixed. Uh, our heart yeah. needs to be renewed. Uh, our heart I'm must on. be the heart of God. Uh, it is in the threshing floor, and we must learn to become altar conscious. The Bible tells us to bring our gifts to the altar. You can swear by the altar. You can wait by the altar. And he promised to give us that new heart. We have an altar on the inside. But you have to know that all you have to do is swear by the throne of God in heaven. That he will answer you by fire 
at the altar, the altar that's on the inside, that altar showing your responsibility to build that altar to the Lord in your heart, to maintain it and to visit it. Hallelujah. You can take your sins, your sorrows, your faults, your failings, to God at the altar and you can trust yeah. him. You can give him a burnt offering. Uh, let God's uh, fire consume you and reprove you. Yeah. If one would cry out to the Lord and praise him, uh, you'll get something started in the house of the God. Uh, the fire yeah. would fall. Healings will take place. Uh, or the captive will be set free. I believe God. Hallelujah, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, the word says God is a consuming fire. Matthew 3, 12, he, is, he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the shaft with an unquenchable fire. And what is that? The unworthiness that's in your life. Uh, the junk that's in your life. He's going to burn it up. Uh, he's going to let it go. Only what you do for the Lord is going to count. Uh, we have an altar. And we must be altar conscious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Proverbs the fourth chapter verse 23 it says keep thy heart with all diligence properly above all things your heart has to be guarded but what do people guard they guard their riches they guard their property they guard their health their body they guard everything which is in an advantage to them People are selfish creatures on the own. God is requesting that you keep your heart guarded. For out of it are the issues of life. The moral conduct, hallelujah, of life, its actions and procedures are determined by the condition of the heart. If the heart is pure, your life will be pure. If the heart is corrupt, your life will be corrupt. The heart is compared with the fountain. The same idea which is affixed to its physical sense is also assigned to the ethical and moral sense. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Physically, it is the central organ of the body. It's the organ that pumps the oxygenated blood throughout the body so that we can live. Once the heart stops, death occurs. Oh, hallelujah. Wow. But morally, it is a seat of affections uh, and the center of moral consciousness. Uh, from this moral center flows forth the issues of life. Ethically, just do the right thing. Hallelujah. And the issues of life comes from the condition of your heart. My God. What character is in the heart? What is your heart doing? What is your heart seeing? What causes it to beat? Don't go by how you feel. Because in Psalms 56, 17, he says the sacrifices of God are what? A broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, thou will not despise. What does that mean? We must keep a humble heart. My God, pride cannot be a part of us. God always shows up when there's a need. And when we are around trouble, he's going to be there. The whole purpose of the Holy Spirit, which is the answer to show us the truth and the way to go. He answers again on the threshing floor. If if need be, God will break you so that he can make you over. Hallelujah. And Matthew 5, 8, it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Do you see that? Those that have a pure heart knows that the heart is connected to the sight 
of Jesus Christ. See, God has a, a divine fire that will burn in us to motivate us and to energize us to serve him, my God, by fanning our spirit into a flame, my God. Our God, a consuming fire, and he wants us to serve him. He wants us to serve him divine, divine fire. We should always have the light of the judgment seat before ourselves. Fear God. Fear God. And he said that's the beginning of knowledge. My God. The beginning of wisdom. And allow him to begin to burn in us. And energize us for his work. My God. My God. See David learned to express adoration and respect to God. But this is more than just a speech or something said repeatedly or ritualistically. No, this is about being so impressed by the character of God, so influenced by his marvelous attributes that we have to say something. Hallelujah. We are compelled by the sheer power and the majesty of the Lord to just say, Blessing be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, we cannot, we cannot contain our adoration for him because his word has reached our hearts and has in, in, influenced us. Hallelujah. And like Jeremiah said in his word, he said, my heart is like a fire that is shut up in my bones. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we must know God can help us Help us meet all our struggles up. If we will just let him worship him, honor him because of who he is and what he's all about. He's worthy of our praise due to the greatness of who he is. His power, glory, his victory, his majesty. Oh, my God, you cannot find one like him. You can search the whole world and not find one. Oh, hallelujah. In some statement like, Lord is to be exalted over all the nations. His glory above the heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We give him glory and honor. We praise him. My God, my God, many serve God with fire, but the fire they serve God with is the fire from themselves, their flesh. But we want the fire that comes directly from the throne of God. Ha! Huh? That's right. That fire that comes on the inside, that fire that will take us to have confidence and joy and praise hallelujah hallelujah we want to be altar conscious my god what have you built on the altar what are you bringing to the altar are you calling on the name of the lord at your altar discussing your requests and desires with him are you seeking him Ah, seeking him concerning what you have need of. The altar, you build it on the inside. Remember, it is an altar where God answers you from heaven. And he will answer by fire. My God, you have to have your heart right. Since your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you must maintain your alter consciousness and listen for God's voice. You will hear him speak through his word, through other Christians, brothers, sisters, and even through the observation of nature, which after all, this is the work of his hands. My God. See, God would rather destroy a city and a house than to permit his child to deny him continuously. 
if you will not glorify God in obedience, then you will honor him in judgment. My God. Amen. Come on now. Hallelujah. God has a way to make you do what is right. And we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So let us do it right. So that it can be marvelous in the eyes of the Lord. Ah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank so you. I want to conclude this message and leave you with two thoughts. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. My Lord. We had no other God. That's right. First Peter 2 verses 4 and 5. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen and precious in God's sight. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be holy, a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So I encourage you today to be an altar conscious. Make a determination to spend time with Jesus. You may have to repair a neglected altar, but that's all right. We just got to do it and take up where we may have left off. You already have spent some time with God. We have to keep it up. Whatever the case, it's a joy to know that God eagerly desires to spend time with us. So may we walk in the light as he is in the light. May we have fellowship with one another. For the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory thank to you. God. We Glory just thank God you. for the word that he has brought forth for today. Hallelujah. And at this time, we are going to uh, just go into our announcements. Again, just reminding everyone that on Tuesdays, at uh, we did change the time to 7 p.m that we will have um, our Bible study. And again, that number is the number that you have called, which is 609-663-1323. And that's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Hallelujah. We are in the book of Hebrews. My God, the better sacrifice. Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And also on Thursdays at 12 noon, we do have the healing room. And that is by Zoom. And that uh, ID is, <clears throat> excuse me, 787-109-3011. And the passcode it's a small M, a capital W, a small X, a capital U, 99. So we encourage you to be a part of that because there's a lot of healing in the room and a lot that God is going over in the healing room. So we thank God again for his goodness and his grace and mercy. And that's it for today. Hallelujah. If there's anyone that desire a special 
prayer. We could do that. Uh, anyone that needs salvation, uh, we know, uh, again, they can receive salvation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So again, that number to call is 609-663-1323. And you can be guided through receiving salvation. So we thank God. We thank God. Have a blessed day. Amen. See you. God bless. God bless all. Amen.